prefix is completely different. So the prefix in the barcode, if somebody scans it, they don't see them as the owner of the barcode. They see whoever bought it. Yep. And that's a problem. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we are talking about a subject that has so many misconceptions, and that's about your barcodes. We're talking about building and protecting your brand online with GS1, the official barcode. All right, and we're going to be also discussing what a Jeetan uh, is. So I call it a Jeetan, and I believe that's the right way to uh, pronounce it. Uh, and the difference between that and a UPC code, how a Jeetan provides brand credibility and protection, and what are some of the common error uh, errors or messages that uh, Amazon sellers have about these uh, GS1 codes or barcodes in general. All right. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. It's hard to get excited about barcodes, but I really am. And the reason is, is probably one of the most common questions I get whenever I'm on the road from new sellers or some of the things that I see online uh, uh, when people come to us to uh, help them manage their accounts and they've got the wrong barcodes. So uh, we went back, we circled back, and we got GS1 to come on today. So today we're going to be discussing building and protecting your brand online. Uh, if you've got friends that are in the community, in the Lunch with Norm community, why don't you tag them and just let them know we're talking about this today because it is a common question. So our guest is the Vice President of Commercialization at GS1 U.S., she designs programs and helps businesses grow through uh, product ad identification and data communication standards. And today we're going to be welcoming Michelle Covey. But before we do that, we're going to have a word from our sponsor. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today. And now let's get back to the show and let's bring in Michelle. That was a very long, long, <laughs> that's all going to be cut out uh, when it goes on the podcast. But uh, anyways, how are you? I'm doing great, Norm. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great as well. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, most people don't get excited about talking about barcodes, but I'm really, well, maybe you, cause you're in I the do. barcode <laughs> business, but you know, Amazon sellers, first of all, they don't know how important it is mm -hmm. and they don't know how much pain they can suffer if they don't do it properly from the get go. And I've been there by the way, mm -hmm. and I've tried to help out brands, which is now a year later and I'm still having problems with Amazon uh, with this one brand uh, yeah. because of the barcode and all of their ASINs were able to get changed except one and it's their best selling ASIN and they're still having problems with it because they decided to go the cheap route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it happens. It's a story here all the time too. So why don't we just start off with that? What is people ask me all the time? What is GS1? Well, that's a good question. Um, so GS1, we are a standards organization um, and, and we're, we administer global standards. So we're known worldwide, most commonly known for the barcode, but we right. do, but we do uh, administer many other business standards to help um, just supply chain efficiencies. Um, we, like I said, we're global. Um, but we're also local. So I work um, with the GS1 US office. Um, I have um, other counterparts in around the world, like GS1 Australia, GS1 UK, GS1 Brazil. But our mission is really to help administer those standards to help our members, um, sellers on Amazon, to um, do business more efficiently. 
why don't we just address the uh, the cheap barcode? Everybody wants to go online on eBay or uh, you know just going to these cheap barcode companies. And why would they go there? Uh, because they go to your website and they see that it's it's more expensive, uh, and they they're trying to save money. Why are these? Why do they even exist? Well, that's a good question. I don't know why they exist, but um, you know, GS1, we've been around for over 50 years. Um, the first barcode was scanned um, 50 years ago in a grocery store here in the U.S., and so we're widely known as the standard for barcodes. Um, so why other um, companies are out there, not too sure, but um, it's always best to come to GS1 for your barcodes because um, you always start off on the right path, knowing that you have an authentic barcode and, um, you know, companies like Amazon and many other retailers out there, um, they recognize that the barcode um, from GS1 is trusted and um, they know that, you know, sellers have started off on the right path and understand the value of standards not too sure why the other companies exist i mean people try to make do business but um, i could just tell you you know gs1 we've been around for a long time we know what we're doing uh i've heard and i don't know how true this is but this is what i've been telling people so hopefully it's the truth mm -hmm. but years ago uh these companies um i've heard is that they were able to go out and get thousands hundreds of thousands of barcodes and so what ended up happening is they were they really cost nothing and then now nowadays they can go and resell it but the problem there is is the prefix is completely different so the prefix in the barcode if somebody scans it they don't see them as the owner of the barcode they see whoever bought it yep. and that's a problem yep. is that correct Correct. So when GS1 administers our prefixes, and we could talk about that a little bit, but the prefix yeah. is um, kind of the, the number that helps, uh, you know, our members uh, enumerate their GTINs or their UPC barcodes. Um, those prefixes, when we administer them, we never reissue them. So they are um, administered to the original owner um, for life. Um, that company may or may not go out of business, and maybe that's how they get resold. I don't know but that um, prefix will always be associated to the original owner. Um, we record that in a database and that database is what, like I said, the major companies like Amazon, other retailers will access to ensure that, that the prefix matches the actual company that um, has those GTINs. So um, if, they, if you get your GTIN from another source, um, it, was, it will be most likely recorded under a different company name and not right. matched and so you know it might you're at risk of not being accepted on major platforms i see we have a major uh issue uh with the tech problem right now just one second one sec one oh. sec. one <laughs> two there there now it should be orange <laughs> I forgot to turn on the lights, okay? So, <laughs> I just saw the comments. So uh, anyways, hopefully that's bright enough. Are they going? Yeah, they're going. Good. I forgot to do that during the uh, uh, before I started the podcast today. Uh, Jetons are always, and again, people go and they buy them because the uh, barcodes, the UPC uh, barcodes typically are cheap but they'll come back and bite you. Uh, Amazon is becoming more and more, they'll clamp down more and more. I've seen them reject products because of barcodes, but it's more when you're going over, let's say that you're trying to expand. And in today's world, we've got to think omni-channel. And mm -hmm. let's say like for us, we had a pet product, we tried to get it over on Chewy. It better have a GS1 code or it's not going to be accepted. Walmart does not accept uh, mm -hmm. anything except GS1 codes. And when we're talking about uh, uh, the barcodes, we're not just talking about one specific code. So there is a variety of uh, codes that you sell. Can we get into the different uh, barcodes that you sell? Sure. There's a couple of things too that you said that I want to uh, unpack. So one of the things is when we talk to um, new members, when they're trying to understand why GS1 over other sources, mm -hmm. 
Uh, we always say start off with GS1 because one, you're starting off with the authentic uh, GS1 barcode, but two, like you mentioned, GS1 is GS1 standards are recognized again around the globe, and many retailers accept it. And some may think they could get away with it with one um, retailer, but if you start to expand channels, like you said, Walmart, Chewy, Target, uh, any of the major brick and mortar, they all accept GS1 standards. So that if you start off with the GS1 barcode first, you know that you're setting yourself up for success to to expand in other channels. So just wanted to touch on that. Very good. We have we have seen people who have started off with maybe a non GS1 um, barcode, and then they'll um, end up getting accepted into other retail chains, and then they'll have to repackage. They'll have to uh, get a new barcode. It just it's very costly in the end. So uh, just start off the right foot and it's it'll save you money in the long run. All right. So can so, we go through the different types mm -hmm. of uh, barcodes now? Sure. So you mentioned GTIN. We yeah. also I will say I'm very guilty of it, too. Even working at GS1, I use them all interchangeably. But there are differences between a GTIN, uh, a UPC or a UPC barcode. UPC EAN. So let's start with um, GTIN. GTIN is a global trade item number, and it's really the number that you see. So the, the string of digits, um, it comes in either 12 digit, 13 digit, or 14 digit. There's also an eight digit too, not widely used, but um, the 12 digit is usually um, issued out of GS1 US, and it's associated to a UPC barcode. So the barcode is where the number is actually um, it's uh, embedded into the barcode, so the barcode could be uh, machine readable. So it's the barcode is the the, the lines, um, and it's called a UPC barcode, um, whereas the G10 is actually the string of numbers. Okay. Um, and then out of mostly, so like I said, GS1 US, um, when we issue our identifiers, we issue the 12 digit um, that is associated, 12 digit G10 that's associated to the UPC barcode. Most other places in the world, um, they will issue 13-digit uh, GTINs, which are then associated to the EAN barcode, which is the European article number. Also in Japan, there's the J Japanese article number, so JAN. But those are the 13-digit GTINs that get encoded into an EAN barcode. But the barcodes should be able to be accepted, whether it's 12 or 13-digit, accepted glo globally. Um, it's just where, we, where they're issued out of. It clears up so much. There's so many misconceptions out there about what it is. Um, y you know, you'll hear people talking about um, one barcode over another barcode, and it's just confusing. And the way that you just provided that explanation clears it up. So it's so simple. So G10 is number. The barcode is the UPC. If it's uh, the 12, it's uh, North American. If it's 13, for the most part, it's the rest of the world, correct? Correct. Yeah. All right. And then so, there's the 14 digit, just to, just to be clear, because I know one of the things that when you list on Amazon, you're asked as your product identifier, is a G10, an EAN, or a UPC? I think there's an ISBN in there also. Yes. Um, so the, the UPC is that 12 digit that you generally get on your each. The EAN is that 13 digit. And then the G10 that they have on their platform is meant for the 14 digit, which is um, for like an upper level packaging, um, like a carton or something like that. So you have a, a can of beans, but then you have a carton of beans that you could sell. So uh, we're starting to see more and more of those uh, cartons being sold, um, whereas before they weren't usually sold at a traditional grocery store. So the 14 digit is now acceptable on online marketplaces. I know, I know we touched on this in the last uh, time we were talking about this. Uh, and we had, by the way, we had really great results of just people listening to that podcast. So there's a lot of people out there that were confused about uh, GS1. But let's talk about pricing. Okay. Uh, sellers, they're worried at the beginning. They're trying to save money. I always tell people that there's a, the right places to spend money and the wrong places. And this is definitely one of those spots where you want to spend a little bit extra, but it's not overly it, years ago. You didn't have certain packages. Now you have that single um, uh, GTN or GTN that you can buy, but let's mm -hmm. talk about the pricing. And so people can get an idea of what they have to spend. 
Sure. So we did um, for many years, like you said, we've had the prefix, which is um, allows to um, sellers to buy in bundles. So we always started off thinking um, companies need lots and lots of numbers. So we usually had like a hundred thousand capacity, a ten thousand capacity, thousand capacity. Over the years, we've heard, oh, we we actually have fewer and fewer numbers. So we then introduced the ten capacity. That was about ten years ago, and um, we heard from our um, members that still you know was too much. So a couple of years ago, we launched the single G10. So you can come to GS1 US and get a single G10. Um, it's only $30 per G10 and there's no renewal fee, which a lot of um, our community was very happy with because the prefix does have an annual renewal fee. But now this gives um, sellers of all sizes um, the options from a single to 10, 100, 10,000. So you could, you know, scale your business as much as you want and still get those identifiers um, at whichever level. We always do say though, um, consider growth because um, if you have, and consider your kind of product line, a lot of people will think, oh, I just have a t-shirt. Um, those t-shirts come in multiple sizes. They sometimes come in multiple um, colors. And so you should consider um, each individual variation should have its own G10. And so even if you think you have one item, you might actually have nine if you have three colors and three sizes. So um, consider that and then also consider where you um, might grow your product lines because in the end, it might actually be cheaper to get the prefix versus the single just because you'll have to keep coming back. Um, and we've seen, we've seen that where members come and they'll get multiple singles and then they realize, well, it actually would have been cheaper to get that prefix. So. You just have to weigh out what's best for your business, but we now do have the options for both the singles and um, for the bundles. We experienced that. So we sell soap and we ended up getting, I think it was the hundred, we thought it would be a hundred. And then we decided that we were gonna do a three pack and a five pack. And all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> all right, we missed a 200. So we ended up having to you know, get that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many we ended up buying because we've got accessories as well, but yep. it's well, well, well worth it. And uh, even that single. So I'm just curious if you're a listener uh, and you know what, if you're doing it, that's fine. But did you ever get caught with the wrong, uh, with the wrong barcode? So has Amazon ever slapped you on the wrist? I made that mistake. So uh, in the early days when I didn't know about GS1, I made that mistake as well. I went out and I got all these really cheap um, uh, barcodes and I found out they suck and <laughs> I had to replace. So I'm just kind of curious if any listeners here are, have gone through the same thing that I've gone through. And there's really no reason not to do it now. So if you're new and you're listening to this and we have a lot of people that are new, uh, please don't make that mistake. Uh, check out GS1 and it's good globally. So that's another question, by the way, I might as well ask mm -hmm. if somebody buys it in the U S can they sell in Europe? Yes. And if somebody buys in the, buy, gets their barcodes from say a European JS1 member organization, they work in the U S so right. they are globally accepted. So, you have different branches of GS1 all over the world. Is that correct? It, right. So is it a, is it licensed to different countries or is it a franchise? How do you, how does this work? It's always confusing. So we say GS1 is a global organization. We are um, governed by our GS1 global office. However, um, and there's a, a give or take about 115 GS1 member organizations around the globe. And each GS1 member organization is usually associated to a region. So GS1 US is a, 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 a member organization of the GS1 um, Federation. Um, we also, in North America, there's also a GS1 Canada, a GS1 Mexico. Um, in Europe, most of the um, nations there have um, a, a GS1 member organization. The interesting thing is, is we each operate individually um, on our own. So GS1 is a federation, a federated model. So while we all um, administer the same standards and we're all governed under the same mission, 
um, we each operate individually. So if you look at um, what GS1 US has to offer um, from a business standpoint uh, and you go to another GS1 member organization, they may have a different pricing structure, they may have different services and offerings because each office runs individually. But we all do administer the same um, barcodes or, or GTINs um, and we still uh, manage the standard globally. All right. Okay. So it is the bottom of the hour. And if you're listening to the uh, podcast for the first time, uh, and I see we have some new listeners, uh, if you are listening to this for the first time, we have a giveaway at the top of the hour. And if uh, if you want to enter the giveaway, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, and you'll get a second entry. So today, uh, we have something really special. Uh, Kelsey, why don't you come on and tell what it is? All right, so this is going to depend on your products as well. So that's why we're going to have a, a choice between two different things. Mm -hmm. So for my side, um, if you have a coupon, uh, a deal, and your product is 4.4 stars or higher, um, you'll be able to be featured in my video on TikTok. I'll do it completely free, um, talk about your product, um, share the coupon um, with my audience, and just post about it. And you'll get your own, um, yeah, lunch for norm deals uh, TikTok done for you. Um, or if that doesn't work for you, Norm, you have a giveaway as well. That you can yeah. Do. So we'll do uh, a press release for you, uh, or a fifteen hundred word written article. Actually, we'll do both for you. How's that? And that's about a five hundred dollar uh, value. Uh, I was going to offer something, and I'm not sure. Uh, I I think this is kosher. Uh, can I buy somebody a single uh, barcode? If that's just to add to part of the, the deal today? Um, it, they would have to have their name associated yep. to it, but it, however you work that out, um, you know. Okay, so do that. I'll do that as well. If you've got a product and you'll have to talk to Kelsey about this when you win, if you don't have a new product, then all right. But if you do have a product that you're thinking about launching, how about uh, the podcast buy you uh, a GS1? Okay, so that would be your single barcode. Okay, Kels, let's go to uh, a sponsor and then we'll come right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by SureGo Marketing. Ready to take your brand to the next level on TikTok and Instagram? SureGo Marketing specializes in helping entrepreneurs and coaches build profitable brands on TikTok and Instagram and in less than 90 days. With SureGo Marketing, you can build your brand, create incredible video content, and increase leads without spending a single dime on ad spend. Visit SureGoMarketing.com today and elevate your brand. Now, let's get back to the show. Oh, one thing I wanted to clear up too, Kels, you're talking about a single video because a lot of the times you'll put on multiple products, right? This will be just one TikTok video, uh, one product in the video. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Now, let me just cough without everybody hearing. I'm so glad everybody didn't hear that. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to the podcast now. All right, the the uh, GS1, how can that protect your brand or your brand's credibility uh, and provide protection? So um, again, going, going back to, I think I mentioned it before, um, when you license your GTIN or a prefix where you could get those uh, like bundles of GTINs, um, they are recorded in our database. Mm -hmm. um, right now we call it Gapir. I've heard other people call it different things. But um, it's um, in, it's like our global registry, essentially. And so those GTINs um, or your license gets recorded there. And that's where um, companies can, you know, view and ensure that you came to GS1 to uh, license your, your um, identifier. Um, companies such as Amazon, others um, are using that database to check, see if your one GTIN is legitimate um, so there is proper construction of your GTIN. Um, and we have a tool that helps that. That's our data hub tool. Um, but then two, that once it's um, properly constructed, that it is associated to your company. So, um, you know, if we look up some of your GTINs on your products, um, it would hopefully be associated um, to your company. 
and that way you can protect it and we say it protects you and that's where um, it allows you to know that your um, G teams will be accepted on these major platforms like Amazon. So um, that's the brand protection side. Um, we do hear um, some companies who say that, well, I did come to GS1, I did get my barcode with you, um, yet Amazon's still not accepting it. Have you heard that before? Yes, I have. Okay, so I could talk about that. That's yeah. um, that's a uh, what we call a G10 hijacking scenario. So somehow some actor out there on the platform has um, used your G10 um, for their listing. Um, and we have ways that can help that. So again, being um, having your GS1 company prefix certificate or your single G10 certificate, you could get that from GS1. Other GS1 organizations have the capability to provide that certificate. But if you go to list, you know you've got your uh, G10 from GS1 and you get that product already exists kind of message. Um, if you provide that certificate to Amazon selling partner support, and say my G10 has been hijacked. And we say that, but, um, and they've kind of used that term internally too. Um, and you use those words specifically in your case to selling partner support. Um, they can generally um, remove that bad listing and then allow you to continue your listing process. So we've worked with them um, in order for um, GS1 members to actually uh, be able to legitimately uh, list even though for some reason, their g already been used on the platform. Good to know. What about if you change the name of your company? Well, that's tricky. So, um, <laughs> the, so we, so it's interesting because we do get a lot of requests of, um, I'll give an example. Yep. Of, so sometimes Amazon will say the brand name does not match your company name. And so a lot of times sellers will come to us and say, I need to change my company name to my brand name. And we often say, is that really what you need to do? And I always give the example of, would Coca-Cola change their company name to Sprite? So a company has a lot of brands um, and you could have definitely many brands, uh, but you don't necessarily have your company name be your brand name. So in those cases, um, what Amazon is trying to do is ensure that you as a, your company um, have the, the, the right to sell those brands. Um, it's not something GS1 can help with, unfortunately, because we don't have a brand database, um, but they do, but Amazon does have a, like a brand authorization process where then you could submit, you know, proof that you as the, the company owner um, can sell those brands. And it, usually they ask you for like a picture of your, your logo on the product yeah. or a website with your brand on it, that sort of thing. But um, we often get that, that question, especially some of the smaller companies, not like the Coca-Cola scenario, but it's always makes sense to people when I say it that way. Um, they'll come to GS1 and say, I need you to change my company name to my brand name so it's registered in the database to match, but that's not really the solve um, and it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I've seen that quite a bit where uh, the brand uses the brand instead of sold by would be company. So take a look at your trademark, a trademark certificate and it should have your company name with your brand that's being yep. trademarked. So uh, I, and I've just recently went through that where one of our uh, brands that we manage uh, set it up wrong and they also were bringing in three new brands. Mm -hmm. And so it was very simple to do. We just went in to the Amazon account and changed the sold by to the actual uh, brand name. Uh, what we did though, uh, if, if you are gonna do this, if you're stuck in that scenario or that situation, just let Amazon know you're doing it because yeah. if all of a sudden they see a change in address, bank account, they, they're protecting you and they could just uh, shut you out of your account and you'll have to, if you have a case uh, for them, then uh, you'll be able to get it up and running in no time at all. But that's a really great example. Yep. Is there, and I forget, and I, like, I've never done this, but did you have a promotion area where people could go in and run promotions out of GS1? No. So we operate um, as a, because GS1 is a, um, a neutral and not-for-profit organization. 
So unfortunately, we can't do you know any special promotions for one company or. Oh, I wasn't talking about that. Oh, okay. I, I <laughs> might, and I. There's been 500 podcasts now, so <laughs> or close to it. But there was a company on here that had a database. And it might be the transparency program from Amazon. It is. Oh, I know that yeah. they do this where you you get the code. So once you get the sticker, and if you scan the sticker, you can go in and create a 10% off. Or people can actually, if they scan, they can see a lot more information about your company, not yeah. just your name. Am I completely off base here? I think you're talking about the um, Amazon's transparency program. Yeah. And... Um, there, I mean, as far as how GS one's involved in that, um, that sticker, that QR code, you can embed a G10 within that, mm -hmm. um, to associate to your product. So they do use GS one standards behind that, that code that they create. Um, but that's, I mean, that's as much as I can say that how GS one's involved in that. So their transparency program is, is run by, by Amazon. All right. Uh some mistakes that you see here, some error messages. We've already talked about one. What are some uh, error messages that you see uh, Amazon sellers might have? Yeah, as they relate to GS1 or the ones that we commonly get, I think I mentioned a couple of them, but I'll, I'll highlight them. One of the very first things when, when going to list, we get a lot of questions on, it says product ID, and then that drop down, G10, EPC, EAN, UPC, ISBN, and um, our members, get confused because they come to us right. and they say, well, I got a G10, so they'll put in their 12 digit in the G10 field. And that's where we say, well, that's actually meant to be a 14 digit field. So you're really supposed to put it in the UPC field. So it's just, you know, the different terminology because we have used it also interchangeably for so long, we even confused Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so again, if you have a 12 digit goes to the UPC 13 EAN. And if you have that upper level carton package, uh, that goes into the G1014 um, field. So that's the first one I mentioned that, um, mm -hmm. G10 hijacking. So we see a lot of times where sellers will come to us and say, I've got my G10 from you, but it's still, it's already existing on Amazon's platform. How could that possibly be? Um, we don't know, um, bad actors out there or for um, a long time, Amazon was not validating um, against the GS1 database. And so that's where we feel um, some of those G10s started off um, but, you know, again, like I said, we've worked with Amazon, so they have um, a standard operating procedure within their selling partner support. You just have to provide your certificate and say, my G10 has been hijacked. They, they have like some AI that, that will send the, um, your message to the right queue. Um, so you have to say G10 hijack in there and it'll get to the right queue and they'll help you um, list your product and, and remove the bad listing. Um, I talked about the brand name. A lot of times companies will come to us and want to change their company name to their brand name. Um, and we advise not to do that. Um, and I think there's one other that we see a lot um, that is related to GS1. Um, and I think Amazon's in the process of changing some of their policies. But um, for a long time, if you had a generic product, um, G uh, Amazon would not allow you to associate it with a G10. And actually, the standards do allow for you to have a, a generic product and a GTIN. And so they've recently changed that. But before, if you did click, you know, product does not have a brand, which means it's a generic, um, it, it would require a GTIN exemption. But it, Amazon now allows a, a GTIN to that. So, um, but they still have some other, you know, like hoops that you have to go through if you do cho choose to make a, a generic product. So. So let's talk about that G10 exemption. People ask about that. Uh, do I need to have a barcode? Do I not need? Uh, what exactly is a G10 exemption? So a G10 exemption is when you go to list and if you don't have a G10, you could apply for a G10 exemption. Um, Amazon does have a, a long list of products that they say um, re require or need a G10 and then ones um, categories that are acceptable for G10 exemptions. And there are categories that we've traditionally seen don't have GTINs associated. So think about handmade items, collectible items, um, even refurbished items, though GS1's working with industry to, to, to create a standard on like how do you identify uh, refurbished items. Um, but you know, Amazon has a, a page where they 
tell you which products need GTINs and which ones are eligible for GTIN exemptions. Um, however, though, even though they say like apparel products um, need GTINs, a lot what they they're finding is there's a lot of GTIN exemptions in that category, um, and I think it's just because it's so skew intensive um, that you know sometimes sellers find it challenging if they have you know, ten colors and ten sizes. I don't know if you have ten sizes of a product, maybe shoes. Um, there's a lot of GTINs, um, but that's uh, you know on a case by case basis that Amazon will decide on those GTIN exemptions. Okay. Uh my dog has decided to come into the room and he's just been in the lake and he is completely soaked oh, no. and he's shaking and, oh, and he smells. <laughs> okay. I know that. I know that so well. <laughs> oh, Dallas. Okay. He's going. Yay. <laughs> okay. What else did I miss anything? Uh, or can we go to the questions? I think one other thing, and I think we've said it early on, is just as you're starting off, set yourself up for success early on and, and, and come to GS1, get your identifiers early on. Um, we've seen, like I said, um, companies that have not started off GS1 and then had to either repackage, relabel, or, or then come back and then reassign with a GSN identifier. And, it, and you think you're saving, saving money up front, um, but you're actually ending up costing more um, in the long run. Um, but having that GS1 identifier on your product allows you to, if your product does do very well, say on Amazon, um, launch into other um, channels very quickly and easily. Um, Walmart, Target, um, other national chains, if you're in grocery, um, they all require or pretty much necessitate the V10. So um, once you, um, start it off in the right foot, then you can continue your, your growth in other channels. Some things to remember too, I've seen this where uh, you had to apply, get another one or just buy another one. And then you've got the cost of it. So you, yeah, you had your cheap uh, barcode. Now you have the a little bit more expensive and you've got to either resticker it yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to resticker it or have a fulfillment company do it. Amazon's not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And you've got a sticker, each one manually, and it will co cost you a ton of time, labor. So just do it right the first time. I like the idea that you said, you know, set yourself up for success. So mm -hmm. if you're going to be a brand, act like a brand. That's, mm -hmm. it's not that much. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So let's go to the questions or comments. All right, so we have two questions lined up for you. Uh, first one's from Cool Hand. Uh, is it worth getting a GS1 barcode for my existing products for my next reorder? Is that even an option to switch my barcodes on an existing listing? So this is one, um, Cool Hand 99. Um, we hear a lot. Um, so if you started off without a GS1 identifier and you want to change, um, there's a lot of considerations. Of course, mm -hmm. I'd say yes, do it, but um, th you do have to have to be very thoughtful about it. One, if you have um, inventory in FBA, um, it's very tricky um, to just switch midstream because um, that product in inventory may not have, the, then you'll have mismatch and, and Amazon has a hard time with that. Um, there's also um, the consideration of will all of your um, customer ratings, your uh, you know, transaction history follow. Um, so you'd have to work. There's a lot of great agencies, and, and maybe Norm, you might know some of this. Like the best way to do that, it, you have to be very thoughtful. So um, of course, uh, as you you know launch new products, it's great to um, start with those G GS1 barcodes. But um, midstream, you know, you have to really uh, think through the process. Yeah, it was so easy a couple of years ago where they allowed you to change it on the fly. Mm -hmm. So we just ran the inventory down and yeah, we'd be out of inventory for a bit, but then we send over the new inventory, start fresh. Uh, now you have to go and apply and let them know. So you, like you said, you have to make a decision whether to do it or restart um but you can't send in it's not as simple as just stickering and sending it in because they've got product still on the shelf so you have to make sure that there's nothing there but it is possible we've done it just recently with a um a large uh 
pet company with uh, a ton of SKUs, and they were all they, they had all of these junk UPC codes. But uh, except for one, which we've been working on for over a year, <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is a process. Unfortunately, I'd like to say it's easy. Um, that's why you have people like Norm out there to help you through it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of considerations in doing it. Okay, next. All right, our last question. Uh, are there any cheap barcodes other than the $30 ones we can buy for dummy listings to test if a product can be sold on Amazon? Just one is kind of expensive if we don't end up launching the product. Um, at GS1 US, our, yeah, our lowest option is that $30 one. Um, and so that is the option we have. We don't do any special promotion, like I said, because of our uh, neutrality. And, you know, if you think about it, 30 bucks, let's say that you're experimenting with uh, a few different products. Uh, for me, I, I don't test it that way. I go, I take a look at the competitive analysis. I do my product research. I do my keyword research. And I'm pretty confident at the end uh, because we're split testing and we're going to companies like uh, PickFu or Product Pinion. Um, you know, these are just a couple of companies that'll help you give you that gut check and just make sure that you're doing the right thing. Um, but if I did it the way that you're looking at it uh, and just, testing out the products and bringing in, you know, a hundred units or 50 units, uh, 30 bucks. It's just 30 bucks. So I don't think how, I don't know how much testing you'd be doing, but, uh, for me, if I brought in 10 products and I'm trying to test them out, it's 300 bucks. It's not a big investment. Um, so anyways, that would be completely up to you, but please, don't go the other route and get it from any of these. Um, yeah, I almost said a company, but no, don't get it from, uh, you know, eBay or any of these other discount uh, brokers. Yeah. Okay. Any, were there any comments, Kels? Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Just let me pull up. Um, Kohan99 said, before I knew about GS1, I, I bought my barcodes cheap cheap and so far so good but my next products will all be gs1 for sure all right and, okay and that, that's i mean just other thing too especially if you did end up getting your cheap barcodes on amazon um not only are they now looking at the database and, and like any new listings looking at that gs1 barcode they are starting to do some back catalog yes up. and so your listing if you do have a, um, a, a non-gs1 barcode may get flagged i can't guarantee but some it depends on their logic and how they figure that out but it may get flagged to um, have you update um, with a gs1 barcode so just that's, and that's uh, common by to, the way something that's to be aware of <laughs> they're going yeah. back and, and asking um, sellers to to update yep and that's very common so uh it's just a matter of time that they want to clean up and make sure that they're going by the uh uh they, they just want to be professional. They want to make sure that they're going by the proper guidelines. Uh, they're doing it right. And it's only going to help you when you want to expand out into these omni channels. Okay. So if somebody's interested in uh, getting a, uh, a real uh, barcode, where can they go? Where can they contact GS1? I think I saw it across the screen at one point, but GS1 US has our website, the gs1us.org. Um, I think also there, um, I saw a flash through there, we give you some tools to determine how many barcodes you may need in case if you have those variations to help you decide which, uh, which option is best for you. Um, and there's also a lot of other resources we provide. We have our own YouTube channel, um, which has um, a lot of great tutorials um, around like what is a G10. Um, and then also if for those more savvy sellers that start to launch in other um, channels, like how to, how to understand the rest of our standards um, because other retailers may ask for um, additional identifiers or the use of standards um, much more than just identifying your product. You might have to um, identify shipments and cartons and do EDI and all that other stuff. So um, we have a lot of resources that, that um, can help sellers along their journey. All right, very good. 
Okay, so before we go over to the Wheel of Kelsey, last chance to enter, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, get a second entry, and we've got a great uh, couple of prizes today. So uh, that's it. Let's go over to a sponsor, and we'll be right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Rebate. Attention sellers and brand owners want to reach more shoppers and boost sales? Rebate's platform connects sellers with shoppers seeking great deals on new products. They make it easy to offer promotions, handle rebates, and ensure seamless redemptions. With countless reviews from satisfied customers, Rebate is the go-to solution to increase your sales. Visit Rebate.com today and start reaching more shoppers. Now let's get back to the show. Okay, so let's have the Wheel of Kelsey. You've already seen this, Michelle, but uh, we're back. I love it. <laughs> All right, here's the Wheel of Kelsey. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. Okay, right. so the Wheel I today, it's a special one because Kelsey's offering something for the first time. Oh, and by the way, if you want to check out the TikTok channel, uh, it's L W N lunch with Norm L W N deals, and uh, you'll see Kelsey's work. All right. So yes, please email me K at lunch with norm.com. If you are today's winner, uh, we do this every episode and I'm give us a spin and let's see who is the winner. Cool hand, cool hand 99. There you go. Uh, we're giving away a lot today, so just email me and we'll uh, I'll recap everything and all your choices too. Congratulations, Luke! And uh, yeah, thanks. And that's perfect. I I know his products. Uh, he's been on the Trash My Product before, and uh, yeah, he's got some great products. So Kelsey, that'll be perfect for him with the TikTok, and also Luke, happy to do that press release and content for you. And if you need that, you were the one in the uh, that made the comment. So if you yeah. need a new GS1 yeah. um, barcode, just let me know. And uh, the podcast is picking that up for you. So you got a good package today. Okay, Michelle, second time. I know. Hopefully you can come on a third time. Of course. And we've always got some new things to share. So we'll figure out the next time and share some new exciting updates for you and your your audience very good all right michelle thank you so much for coming on the podcast today want more great information don't forget to subscribe by clicking here also if you want to check out our latest podcasts click over here lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.